Yes, it is. It seems like everybody is wanting everyone in the committee. Uh, of course, it's not like it was last week when uh, nobody, but uh, b nobody but somebody was here. Uh, the audience was here, and I felt a little alone up here, <laughs> except for you, Debbie. Yes, she she was here. But we're going to get started. I'm going to have a prayer, and then we're going to have uh, Chairman Black to come up. Father, thank you for the day, and thank you for loving us, and all the blessings you give to us. Thank you for being the greatest state uh, in the United States. Uh, and and the, we just pray, Lord, that we will be good stewards of everything that you've entrusted to us. And bless this time together. For it is in Christ's name I pray. Amen. All right. Uh, I would say, Chairman Black, your own and your own and your own and your own, since all of the bills we have to consider today are your bills. Well, you know, this represents two years' work. All right. Well, okay, that's that's great. Let's start off with uh, what I have here is uh, Senate Bill 129. Uh, if you would like, yeah, that would be a great one to start with. Uh, this is a bill that would uh, allow uh, the prospective employees that uh, have military experience. To come in and, and buy for some credible service, provided their military service has not uh, uh, been used to uh, draw another retirement benefit. Uh, this was brought uh, to me here a couple of years ago by uh, uh, Senator Rett, and uh, his bill uh, that he brought that time was. Uh, at a set fee and it was not full actuary cost and we did, uh, we couldn't get it moved. Uh, but this one provides that they can buy in for that credible service at full actuary cost. And it also has something that uh, uh, we've never done with retirement systems bills before in that uh, this allows these people to pay that cost uh, over a period of time, up to 120 months. Uh, one of the things that I've seen over the years is people come in and want to buy credible service, and uh, we go through all of the expense of getting the, the numbers put together, and when the, they come back, the figures are high, they can't afford it. Uh, and so this would, uh, this would make it more accessible to more of the people, particularly the folks that uh, maybe served a term or two in the military, that they're not going to have a whole lot of money to make a big uh, purchase into a retirement plan, but they could withstand a little extra deduction each month to pay into this thing uh, over a period of time. Uh, that's what the bill does. Any questions? All right. Any questions from the committee? I I, I just have one question myself, and 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 this is uh, it has uh, the way that they can actually. Um, do this in payments, uh, 12 through 120, which would be 10 years. Um, is there any interest? Oh, yes. This is all full actuary of cost. Okay, I understand. I mean, they, they, they would have to pay more if they took a 10-year deal. Okay. That's that's the only thing I was right. – I just wanted to clarify. All right. All right. Any other questions? What's the pleasure of the committee? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't see your light. Is it, I, I have no problem with allowing them the payback, but is by offering that to one group and not others, is that going to be a problem? Uh, you never know until it comes up. So deal with it then. Deal with it then. Okay. I, I will address this. It is the, most of the bills I've got coming forward have got that provision in it. Okay. All right. Chairman Green. Mr. Chairman, at the proper time, I'd like to make a motion. Well, I think this is the proper time. Mr. Chairman and members of the committee, I move that Senate Bill 129 uh, do pass. We have a motion. We have a second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, let me know by saying aye. Aye. Any opposition, like sign. Motion's carried. Thank you. We're starting off great. <laughs> All right. Let's start. Uh, let's, the next one is... Uh, 
Senate Bill 197. Yeah, and there is a, I think there's a sub to this. Is this the only senator who does any work over there? Sir? Is this the only senator who does any work? For I'm not going to get into that. He's got one of my bills. So, you know. Well, that yeah, makes it that him makes special. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. Send uh, 197 addresses uh, uh, a problem that has led to some of our uh, financial challenges with our retirement Who's system. That over the years, we've had a number of bills introduced that allow people to buy in for credible service uh, for activities. Uh, that they were involved in uh, and buy in at less than full actuarial cost. Uh, this bill just says that from here on, uh, any buying in will be at full actuarial cost. Uh, one of the things that I've set out to do is with, with this bill, uh, was, uh, in fact, I think the last couple of years, everything we passed uh, had full actuarial cost. Uh, and uh, I wanted to go back and address some of these old statutes that uh, might still be there. And, and uh, I was, this will get us moving in a more positive direction as far as the finances of our retirement systems. Uh, and also, I think that it will uh, sort of send a good message to the uh, retirees out there that we can manage these systems and uh, get this uh, financial crisis that we're facing uh, in better shape. And I believe you also have a uh, substitute right. uh, to this. And let me just make sure that we have the right LC number, 430928S. That's correct. All right, thank you. Um, if you would uh, just explain uh, what, and you may have already in, in your comments explained what you're doing in the substitute, but if you could just share the, the, sub, the substitute for us. I believe this is a bill that uh, uh, there was some error in the original draft. Yes, sir. We just corrected that. Yes, sir. Well, I wanted you to say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I may be good, but I ain't perfect. Right. Yeah, we had we had discussed that earlier. <laughs> anyway, uh, the committee have any questions uh, about uh, uh, House Bill 197 and then the substitute? Uh, which is just a, a correction that was in, made in error. All right, no questions, and I'll entertain a motion. Yes, sir, Mr. Vice Chairman. Uh, I move that uh, substitute the SB 197 LC 430928S to pass. All right, um, there's been a motion to pass the substitute. Uh, we have a second. We have, second. Do we have a, and a second? All in favor, uh, let me know by saying aye. Aye. Uh, motion's carried, and uh, now uh, we uh, would ask for a motion for Senate Bill 197 uh, as substituted. Substitute 197, excuse me. As substituted. All right, we have a motion. To whatever I said? Yes. yes. All right. We have a motion. Uh, we have a second. Second. All right. All in favor, let me know by saying aye. Any opposition? There is none. And we move on. All right. Next Senate bill is Senate Bill 293. This is a bill, it's another one of these that's, uh, I'll say, uh, designed to uh, give a little boost to our uh, retirement system. Uh, I've, I've actually used the parable of our retirement uh, system so it's sort of like a bucket of water. We got uh, people pouring in, the employees and the employers, and we got the retirees dipping out. And our challenge is to maintain the level in that bucket so that uh, There'll be something there for the retirees to continue dipping out of, but uh, uh, over the years we've had uh, some few little 
uh, holes poked in our bucket and, and tried to fill a couple of those with the, with the bill about uh, requiring bills to be full actuary uh, funded. And uh, this bill is designed just to get a little extra money coming in without it being uh, overly painful for anyone. It has to do with the uh, uh, employees coming back after retirement working 49%. And this bill provides that uh, the employer will uh, pay into the retirement system the uh, employer and employee cost. Uh, this will be uh, on par with them hiring a person that's not uh, retired because uh, if they hire someone that's not retired, they have to contribute to the system plus pay uh, the employer insurance portion. So this would, this would uh, basically be sort of taking a little advantage that the employers have by hiring someone uh, at 49 percent because they're not having to make that uh, contribution or pay on the employer insurance. And this would be uh, bringing that to uh, a par basis. And this would put just a little extra money going into the retirement system. All right. Do we have a question from the... Um all right, Chairman Benton. Uh, uh, Senator Black, uh, on uh, your 49%, are you including uh, contract workers on this? Uh, I think there's, there's some limitations already in the statute that uh, if an employee that's retired, comes back and works more than 49%, then they have, uh, 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 was to do that, they have got to uh, come back on and be a contributing member. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, contract employees. Uh, they contract for a service right. that comes in and works in the school. Would, would that include them as well? I don't think it addresses contract employees mm -hmm. that are contracting themselves. Okay. I'm, I'm not sure about that, to be honest with you. So could, would it be, I hate to assume anything, but uh, that if, if doing that job in full time required the system to pay into teacher retirement, that they would be included in this, in this bill, correct? I, I would... Uh, I assume that since if it was a contract deal, they would not be required to be uh, contributing or on the retirement nor the uh, insurance mm -hmm. if they were not retired. And so I, I would, but I don't think that's addressed right. in this bill. All right. Uh, another question, Mr. Chairman. I, I've got a couple if I can just. You don't have to ask them. Just okay. keep on going. All right. <laughs> um, second thing is that. Um, what about your Reese's? Uh, they don't have any source of income other than what they charge the schools, and yet they are working a lot of 49 percent people. Uh, are are they going to have to come up with this? Well, they're they're full time I, employees or right. member of teacher retirement, but they're but they're uh, but they supplement with. 49% people, are they going to have to come up with this? And the reason I ask, I heard from my local RISA that if this bill passed, the first year would cost them $110,000 out of their budget, and they're not they are not budgeted for that. Well, I don't think RISAs are, and I'm not sure now whether or not they're classified as, as within the system. If they hire a person that's not retired, have they got to contribute uh, to the insurance and the uh, retirement? Well, if, if they have full-time employees that, those those employees are members of teacher retirement. Okay, then that, that they would uh, was this would uh, I, I would assume this would be applicable to them. Um, what what about these these systems these small systems that are using the forty nine percent employees to balance their budget? Uh, have a lot of concern for for those that we. We still have austerity cuts, even in this time of plenty, and yet we're going to be asking these systems that are struggling to keep the millage down and to keep 
quality education in the in the classroom by hiring these 49 percenters where they don't have to and, and i understand maybe this 49 percent was 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 a big mistake to start off with but we had a teacher shortage when this was enacted so um can you can you address that well i don't think oh, in fact here again i i don't have any knowledge but i suspect you wouldn't find a big uh difference ratio wise of the small systems as compared to the larger system because i uh, you know, my background was uh, from the, being on the school board in Lowndes County, which is uh, the biggest uh, school district in, in the area. Uh, and, uh, you know, this was a very favorite uh, uh, tool that, that was used uh, and has been used uh, in that system. Uh, so I don't know that you could separate out smalls, from, but, but you could be. Uh, and I think this is a uh, this is a question as to what you're going to put the greater emphasis on, the retirement system or the, or the uh, local finances and the, what their job is with. In other words, now, but this will be uh, was a cost that will go on the local boards. It will be a plus for the retirement system. And uh, I, uh, I feel like that the, uh, in fact, the only opposition I have heard has been from uh, – finance directors and superintendents uh, was concerned about the cost uh, and I think this is something that would uh, uh, be well received by the, the teachers from the standpoint that uh, I'd like to help project the image to them that we can uh, make some positive change and uh, move in the positive direction to address the shortage we have and, to, uh, and here again I'm, I'm talking teachers and this is a ERS bill, not a TRS bill. Mm -hmm. We got we got the uh, uh, TRS bill coming next. But I thought this was the TRS. This is the TRS. Yeah, this is 293. Oh, I, I have it in the wrong order. I'm sorry. Uh, you scared me there. I thought I'd wasted yeah. all my good questions on oh, wrong yeah, yeah. bill. <laughs> <laughs> this, this 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 is the TRS bill, but we uh, was there they're they're like a pair of matched views, both of them the same. <laughs> uh, Mr. Chairman, at the proper time, I'd, I'd like to offer a, a couple of amendments to this bill, um, and maybe the the senator would go along with them. Uh, I'll, I'll uh, stop my questions right there. All right, thank you, and we'll take another question, and then we'll I'll come back to you. All right, uh, Representative Buckner. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, and I'm not certain who to direct this to, but I wanted to be clear before I um, went too far down the road on this bill. Currently, when a school system hires someone at, for 49 percent, doesn't the retirement? How do, what happens to the retirement, and and what does the school system actually pay? I guess is my question. Well, when they hire the uh, 49 percenters, uh, they pay whatever they agree on. It doesn't have to be based on uh, their previous salary when they were working. Mm -hmm. uh, but when my, they my experience has been in most cases that uh, that it is at the same salary. But uh, I mean, the uh, school system pays but they don't have to contribute to the retirement system, nor do they have to pay into the insurance for the employer's portion. Okay, so they're paying them a salary with no benefits, essentially. That's correct. And their retirement check stops while they're no, getting that, no, or they, they get they it? they continue to resolve their retirement. Okay. Now, now, there is provisions that they can suspend uh, their retirement and come back to work full time, and that, there's, also, there's, there's provision for that in the code. But and these 49 percenters, they just come back and, and, and like I said, uh, uh, they work. Uh, and one of the reasons that this is so popular is a lot of these uh, uh, people will come back and actually work more, particularly the ones that, that have administrative jobs will come back and work more than half time. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just because they, uh, uh, they're drawing their retirement and this is just extra money to them. And, and they love what they're doing, and, and so this is one of the reasons it's so popular uh, with the systems. 
And so with this bill, the school system would pay the salary and then they would pick up retirement benefit costs. Right. And does that, how does that affect the retirement for that person? Does it? It doesn't change the retirement for that person. It, everything stays the everything same. It just adds same. money to the coffers of TRS. It just adds money to the coffers of TRS. Uh, may, may I ask just one more question? Quickly. I, I, I'm wondering if this causes a disincentive for school systems to hire the 49 percenters. Uh, well, I don't see where it would be a disincentive because uh, uh, it's, it's, it's costing the same thing to hire two part-timers as it would one full-timer that wasn't retired. And they, in, in a lot of the situations that I'm aware of, they're getting more than half-time effort out of these people. And so I mean, there is a, uh, I would, there is a strong... Uh, I'll say attraction for these retirees to come, come back, back. And, 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 and work a little less than what they had been because when you take uh, the, uh, was in the retirement plus that 49% uh, pay, they're getting more money than what they were getting. And, and so this, uh, was, this is a, uh, there, there's a, a number it's of people that choose this route. One more question, uh, Senator Black. The the state sends the money down to the local to to pay the employee portion of. Is there any? I, I don't see anything in the bill here that's going to require them to to pay this. I, uh, to, uh, I was. Did, did Buster Lee? I want to make sure I'm right on this. Did uh, did you hear my question on that? The state state sends the money to the local districts to pay the employee share. Are are they going to be required to up their up the ante on that? Mr. Chair, as I understand, that would be what the bill would do. That's yeah. It would require them to pay that the employer portion and employee portion as set forth in the law. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. I'm sorry, I Representative Bentley. Developed it, so I can't go to the line. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, to my former seatmate of the House, Senator Black, I welcome you back anytime you want to come. Well, thank you. <laughs> but um, can you, I'm sorry that I was late arriving due to some other um, priorities, uh, but can you kind of help me understand what kind of generated What's the purpose behind this Senate Bill 293? To get a little more money into the retirement system. I mean, we're facing uh, a substantial challenge. I mean, when you look at the budget last year, over $200 million was had to be put in. Uh, and uh, this year we got 360-something million. Uh, uh, you know, we've had... Uh, people in the past that have uh, made suggestions that we need to get away from this defined benefit and go to a defined contribution plan and, and uh, uh, this amount of money that we're having to pump in here the uh, last two years mm -hmm. is fueling more of that thinking. And so I, I personally am very committed to a defined benefit plan for our teachers. I, I, my experience with educators, I know these people, that's what they want. They're not risk takers. They don't want a plan that might make them more money if it poses some risk of them not uh, having as much money. And, and uh, uh, was there certain, I mean, these divine contribution plans are great for the people that, that are of the temperament that uh, they, can, they can deal with risk. But uh, my experience in dealing with educators, most of them, are not of the temperament to want to, to, to take these kind of risks. They want the assurance of a, def, of a defined benefit plan. Okay. Uh, is that, did you have any other questions? Uh, that's, that's, that's. All right, I want to um, 
we've had a lot of questions and it's thought provoking. Um, Vice Chairman Kirby, uh, do you have a motion? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, you know, applaud what you're trying to do, and, and we've got Representative Benton's amendments here. Uh, we've got 21 more days to do something on this, so at this time I'd like to move that we table this and come back at it later after we have a little more time to digest it all. All right, we have a motion. Do you have a second? second. Have a motion and second. Uh, any questions? All right, all in favor of this motion to table uh, House Bill, I mean Senate Bill 293, let me know by saying aye. aye. Any opposition? All right, motion carried. We'll work on that and uh, Chairman Black will we'll come back well, I certainly to that. appreciate uh, your consideration and, and, and I certainly realize that this is the, uh, the more challenging decision we have to deal with. Uh, so. Okay. Uh, we'll go on to Senate Bill 294. Well, 294. Appreciate that. Uh, this is the mate to 293. This one applies to the ERS. Same, uh, same scenario. All the way around, same ball game. All right, uh, I'm sorry. Have any questions from the committee? You want us, you want us to think about that too? We can, if you'd like. Colas seems to be a, a, a huge uh, concern right now. <laughs> and um, <laughs> would you be um, uh, okay with us looking at this? When You've got to come back for the other. I, I, I wouldn't. I, right, would, I, I would. Uh, uh, I, I would actually. All right. We'll feel, enter. I, I would actually feel like you would be more diligent. To sit down and, and, and yeah, we'll just we'll just postpone it this till the next time. Okay, that's fine. All right, we only have one left, and this is this is uh, uh, you have a bill, and uh, Chairman Maxwell had a bill. It's the same bill, right. so um, it, you're, and it's the same bill. <laughs> So I guess all we need to do is approve this since this is the same bill that... Uh, we're, we're, we're taking a double barrel shotgun going after this thing. Hope one barrel gets through. Okay, and we've already passed this right. uh, before. Uh, this is Senate Bill 333, and we've already passed out of this committee uh, the um, matching bill. Is there any question? Uh, if there is none, we have a motion to move on... Um, Got a motion, second? second? All right, all in favor, let me know by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? All right. It's uh, you and, and, and uh, Representative Maxwell is in good shape. And we will get back to you here in, uh, in short order and, and talk about these other two. And uh, would you take the responsibility of either carrying or finding someone to carry these bills? That would I, I certainly if you'll tell me what to say. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good enough. Thank no, you, we'll, sir. Uh, we'll be fine, yes, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, if there's no other business, this uh, committee is adjourned. <laughs>